but it's a true testament to like, if you set your mind to something, you get going, right? Like, and you have to have the big vision. You have to have that dream, but you really can make it happen. Like I, I, I have to be a testament to people who like, who are just at that beginning phase. I was there like, and now all of a sudden, like I'm on call with Kevin Hart, like yep. crazy, right? Or I'm in like Nepal with my yep. team giving away 2 million sticks, but it's all about, it's like getting going and then building momentum and just continuing that momentum and knowing that whatever gets thrown at you, you're gonna be able to handle it. Love it. Boom. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, so let's go into, so for those who don't know, um, and I think most people do, like get, what's what's the background of, let's well, start with you first yeah. and then go into Liquid IV. So um, what's kind of your like three minute, uh, you know, kind of origin story? Yeah, so I, uh, I love sports my whole life. I was like, I played three sports in high school. Um, I wanted to be a pro golfer my whole life once I started focusing on that. Um, I was fortunate. You do kind of have a golfer look. Do I? Yeah. Maybe it's the I would right put, now. <laughs> if it was Titleist, I'd be like, oh yeah, he's a pro golfer. <laughs> I think I went with yeah. the no brand. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I, that was sort of my goal once I started focusing on that like midway through high school. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to play um, at Loyola Marymount here in LA. Um, I honestly, throughout about three years, I was like, I'm going to be on the PGA Tour. This is still my focus. I had a couple injuries my senior year. I wasn't really playing as well as I wanted to. I was a little bit burnt out because I'd done it for so long. And it was like this first realization. I was like, oh shit, what am I gonna do with my life? Like I'm not, like I, this is not gonna happen. And so it wasn't like a failure, but it was the first time where I, I, I really had set my mind on this for so long and I didn't accomplish it. And so um, I went to the Dean of the Business School. I hadn't really paid attention in school. Where uh, were you going? A Loyola Marymount. Okay. And uh, I said, hey, I really wanna get into the entrepreneurship program. And he was like, well, I mean, you don't have any of the prereqs. You have, like, I can't just put you in the program. I was like, if you get me in this one class, I won't let you down. And I went to his office like three days in a row and finally was like, listen, just stop bothering me. I'll let you in, but like, don't let me down. And so that was in 2010 um, when the Haiti earthquake hit. And I was able to gather a group of like 10 students and we got over 20,000 meals sent to the people of Haiti in like a month long period and got all over the news and a bunch of press. And I had no idea even like what entrepreneurship really was and like, even running a business, but I just found like this, this passion that I had never like felt before, except for playing sports. And I was like, wow, like I could do something besides sports. Like I love the business aspect of it. I love the leadership aspect of it. And I love, I realized how passionate I was about helping other people. So the long story short there is I actually won entrepreneur of the year, my senior year, and I wasn't even supposed to be in the program. And so they still sort of like tell that story, which do is they say cool. like you owe us or is it more like, no, it, it's, it's good kinda, for you. It's like... kind of like the, it, it's almost like the entrepreneurial thing. Like yeah, that's it, true. Like, like if he wasn't really, even trying to be an entrepreneur, you want it, yeah, you can you're, you're probably, yeah, yeah, you can make yeah. it happen. Yeah, you can make it happen. So, um, so anyway, I, I touched the entrepreneurship thing. Then I ended up going to work for the Arizona Diamondbacks, the pro baseball team. I became friends with a bunch of the guys on the team, and they were all when I go down in the dugout in the clubhouse before the game, they were all drinking Pedialyte, which I thought was like silly that the best athletes in the world yeah. who have access to all the best products were drinking something that was designed for were little you kids. Were drinking that in college too, or no? So my me and my you know college friends are drinking yeah. for hangovers, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And then you have these, these pro athletes drinking it for like professional rehydration. Mm -hmm. and you're like there's something wrong with this picture. Like people are going to the baby aisle to get something that's made for adults. And then I started really digging into the science. And so I talked to the trainers and the nutritionists and they explained, you know, when you're in the heat or when you travel, um, you know, your body gets really dehydrated and the solution, oral rehydration solution, which is sodium, glucose, potassium mixed at a really specific ratio with water, um, allows water to absorb in your bloodstream way more efficiently. So like when you drink that bottle of water, your yeah. body's probably only absorbing maybe like 20 to 25. Here? Well, we got some right here. We'll load it up after. <laughs> you, you know, your body's probably only absorbing maybe like 25% of that bottle. Yeah. Um, and when you mix it with an ORS product, you can absorb like 75 to 80% of the bottle and it happens a lot faster. And so when I learned about the science, it was actually invented by the World Health Organization back in the 1970s, mainly for like women, children who were attracting these crazy diseases and their digestive system was totally messed yep. up. So like if you know if you or I get the stomach flu and you get really dehydrated and you can't hold anything down, mm -hmm. you get an IV put in your arm because it gets the hydration right into yep. your bloodstream. Well, these people didn't have access to medical attention like that in these underdeveloped nations. And so this simple solution, sodium, glucose, potassium, was deemed one of the best medical advancements of the 20th century because it saves so many lives from dehydration. So when I heard about this, I was like, this is crazy. Like, what other products are using the science? And at the time, like five, six years ago, like nothing besides this baby drink with all this preservatives and artificial flavors and all this crap in it. I was like, what if you could take the science, 
you know, take all the crap that's in those other things, um, put a cool adult lifestyle brand around it, make it non-GMO and organic and make it healthy and then market it for adults. And so that was the very original idea. It's, it's like gone much, much deeper since, but I was able to get some pretty good like beverage nutrition scientists on board. They understood the vision. Um, I got into one Whole Foods in 2015 and I won't spill the whole story too much, but basically started selling, demoing the product myself like every weekend at the Venice Whole Foods and just like started selling it. And after three months, became the top selling item in that Whole Foods. And that's when I realized, hey, we might have something here. Like people are looking for an alternative to traditional sports drinks. Everyone loves water, but it's just like hard to drink enough of it. And so that was when we really started like focusing on, on the business. I love it, man. Yeah. So, so when was the start of the business? When did you... We, we started like, uh, we, we like incorporated or whatever, yeah. like in 2012, but like we First had, I was about to go 2015. So okay, cool. I was about to go to business school. Like, like my, we all had other jobs. Okay. And so we were getting it going. And then an investor in 2014 said, you're not going to business school. You can have my, here's the money, but you're not going to business school and you guys are quitting your jobs. And so it kind of like made us either choose to go all in yeah. or like kind of just keep it like as a side thing. And I'm, I'm a, I have a very all or nothing personality. Yeah. And so like my dad really wanted me to go to business school and my, and I wanted to live in like a new city and just yeah, like have yeah. fun kind of. And then my mom uh, was like, you should, you know, I think you should go for the business. And so <laughs> I kind of just went all in with it. And, so and that's funny. when we just like stepped on the gas and it was just like yeah. blinders on focus. So who was the original, who's the original crew? Me and two college buddies. Okay. And so uh, we were like best friends in college, which as people say, it's like starting a, a business with friends is mm -hmm. really, really hard. And yeah. so, uh, they're both not involved in, in the operation of the business anymore. We're all good, yeah. um, but just for one reason or another, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're not involved day to day. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're the original three. And then, I mean, even through 2016, there were still like five of us, okay. 2000, even 2017, like six of us. So just over the last like 24 months, it's gone yeah. from like little local brand where we're in like, a, you know, 100 stores in SoCal yeah. to 2017, we're in 10,000 doors across the country. 2018 we're in 20,000 doors we'll be in 30,000 by the end of this year awesome. and the company's just like just gone crazy Congrats, man. thank you that's I appreciate huge. it it's wild. That's crazy so so you go from college you did graduate Loyola I graduated okay. Loyola, yeah and then right after that started on the brand no that was on the I started working for the D-backs the D-backs that's right okay actually when we were getting going I, okay. I left this out of the story I went back to LMU and I said god hey I got this really good idea uh like you know is there like can we get some backing or some students or something and they said you know, you were entrepreneur of the year two years ago. Yeah. Come pitch it to an entrepreneurship class. If there's any students who want to work on it, they can work on it for the semester. So for two straight semesters, I'd get five students awesome. just to work on the business. Child for, labor. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, that's funny. And then yeah. when did the when did the whole give back concept? So I get, do, do you want to talk about that first? How yeah, that whatever. Came about? I can go yeah. wherever you want. Yeah. I, so, I, so I love the concept behind it, obviously. So build the brand. The initial goal is hydration, mm -hmm. but obviously it becomes a bigger thing right absolutely yeah. um so how did that evolve from just being okay i want to help people hydrate to yeah. the change the world concept yeah so it first started actually with that college project when we were able to get all these meals sent and i just like again like it, it everyone's sort of affected differently by events in their life and this one for me i just like i felt so fulfilled like i was like so excited to like do this and it's almost like it was like a selfish thing like the way i felt when i'm when i was helping all these people was just like such an incredible feeling i feel like I had this purpose, right? So that was my first taste of it. When the business got going, the root science I just told you about was made for people who were dying from dehydration around the world. So it wasn't like our original goal because I knew we needed to like create a business that actually made money, but it was always part of what we were doing. Like, how can we give back? And so it first started with, you know, we gave a hundred sticks to like a homeless shelter here, right? Started really small. And then as, as the business started getting some momentum, we were able to like create a one for one um, mission where each time someone purchases our product, we donate a serving to someone in need. Um, when I just went to this trip, uh, I was able to take our whole team to Nepal, um, which was just, again, one of those like sort of life in inflection point moments. Um, you know, there's like these people who just have nothing and like we're so fortunate and you realize like how like grateful you are, but it also made me feel kind of helpless, like how there's just so many people who need more help. Yeah. And so, We've been able to donate now from 100 sticks to now we've donated over one and a half million servings, soon to be two million. But I realized there was still more we could do. And that's sort of where like the CTW changed the world mm -hmm. thing came in. And so I want to keep donating a ton of product. And it, and it also creates this community of people who love buying our product because they know they're helping other people. But this like sort of bigger mission is that, you know, commercially people buying our product, we're up, we're helping, you know, we're changing the world for their lives too, yeah. right? But, but globally, like I learned how like, 
I never understood how important education is and how people who don't know anything and they don't have these to like research what's going on around the world, like how these schools were so impactful. And so, um, the mission sort of grew over the last six months where we're actually going to be building a school in Nepal in this place that we just went. And it's about hydration, obviously, but Mm -hmm. hygiene and like, they don't know about washing their hands or like just the simplest thing, simplest thing. They don't, they just don't know. They've never been taught those things. And so their, their lives like suffer from it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's turned into this mission where our community is a part of it. Our team and employees are a part of it. And like, I just realized at the grandest scale now, like it started with one stick at a time at Whole Foods. And now for me, like I, I honestly, for 30 years of my life, like I feel like I'm in a great spot. I've loved every second of it. I've gone through all my different phases and I have like 30 or 40 more years now to leave like the most like, like lasting impact on the world and help the most people as possible. Like I, I'm like so clear, like yeah. sometimes I haven't been as clear. I'm so clear with my purposes. And right now liquid IV is like in like the entire way I'm doing it. I'm sure it will continue to scale out, but yeah, that's kind of, when did, when did you mission. hit that? Essentially, when did you hit that moment where you were like, this is cause obviously like you've been building a brand, it's been successful, but at what point did it become like, this is like much bigger than I either ever thought, or did you think? No, it was it's bigger be than I thought. Okay. Yeah. I think part of it came as the business really started to scale and I was able to get like, like experts and, and just like, just killers in the business. Like people who are great at what they do, like who are better than me at what they do. And mm-hmm. we were just talking about with your business. Like, yeah. I think some of the best thing you do is bring like just winners in house. Right. Yep. Cause what it allows you to do then is like, you get to, you know, remove yourself a little bit from it. You can be in more of like a leadership role, right? And I still get my hands dirty. It's not like I'm, I mean, I'm grinding still, but it allowed me to just look a little bit broader, a little bit more perspective. And then that, you know, with the business and more support internally in combination with a couple of these trips I went on, I I came back from that trip and I, again, I didn't, I felt not good. I I knew we were helping a lot, but I was like, how can we help more? And Mm so I've always just been like, like it's kind of corny, but I've always been like moti- like weirdly, um, like obsessed with like the best leaders of all time. Like I'm like Martin Luther King and like just, just guys like that. I've like mm-hmm. studied them. Right. Yeah, or, or even like the best athletes. Like I've been like the mind of Kobe Bryant mm-hmm. or like Tiger Woods. And how do you get to that point? Yep. And so after I went on that trip, the combination of like this motivation to help people and then seeing it and having a business platform where we could do it. I, I just, it was almost scary because yeah. I know how all or nothing I am. And I was like, wow, am I really going to like commit to like yeah. trying to do this? And so it, I went through like, first I felt helpless. Then I was like scared, like, holy shit, I'm going to try and do this. And now I'm like just so fired up Wait, about it. Which trip was this? This is the Nepal trip. The re- most the recent one. in one. May. Oh, yeah. so this is all kind of a, it's I been mean, over the last building. year. Yeah, it's yeah. been building, but like that was like, it, the, it just, yeah. you know, and then this round with all these celebrities yep. that came in. And so that was another thing as I'm talking to them. Yep they were so passionate about that. And I was like, wow, it's so cool that these people with these incredible platforms, they're joining because obviously it's a smart financial, yep. like it's a good financial investment for them. And they're into the brand and the product and hopefully they believe in our leadership team, right? But the, the thing that they were most excited about was like the CTW mission. Yep. And so we called the round. We didn't name it like a series A or a series B. We called the CTW That's round. Awesome. I was like, I'm breaking the mold. Yeah. I'm not calling this around. This so is like So many financial special. advisors are like, what the fuck is this shit? He's kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I had an interview with Forbes. Gary yeah. V took an interview with okay. Forbes. And they actually didn't publish the piece because they were like, well, it's not a money raising round. It was uh, like a, it was some like dude, mission that, marketing that, thing. I was that like, that itself suck. is going to go down in history. I the know. fact that, you know what I mean? Like Forbes turned that down and then. Gary posted a video today. I got yeah. like 50 messages about it. He posted a, I didn't know he was filming when he got interviewed by Forbes. And got I was it. Like, and he met, he's talking about Liquid IV and me. And the best part is it's nowhere to be seen in the article, but I now have this video to That's show. Awesome. And it's, so I have all oh, these quotes from the video, which is I, Like time stamp that. It's so good. I'll show it to you after. It. Yeah, yeah it's sure. so cool. Um, so I guess let's get, I mean, you got a lot going on. So the, uh, no, I'm like, I'm like trying to figure out which way to go. Yeah, Cause there's so many things oh, I want to talk to you about. Um, so from, so let's, this is a crazy part to me. So. And I'm just kind of putting all these pieces together yeah. the, you know, so you're in Nepal and in the crazy. So I love, and I don't know if we talked about it. Like I love to travel yeah. and I, I love I, I checked it. Oh, okay. On went, it yeah. went down. Dude. I, I literally like my thing is like traveling third world countries. Um, and it's, it's the most, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like my version of like therapy totally. slash buying something fancy. Like, that that dopamine you get from like you know a quick like transaction of like oh cool i bought this thing that i wanted right, right? like that it's so much more long lasting when you travel totally. um and i almost feel like i get what you're saying about the um the part where you feel like you're not doing enough like 
and it's almost a, um, I was trying to think about this, but it's almost like a, a, it's a selfish feeling because I realize when I go to these places, like I stay with families and, and I'll wow. stay in the middle of jungles, whatever it is. It's amazing. Like I realize how much more, like I'm giving them money to stay with them and like, you know, again, imparting anything I can, right? To help right. them out. Um, but I'm getting so much more from them from a, like, just a psychological standpoint of like appreciating my life and what we have, you know? Totally. Um, and it just hits the reset button. Totally. Um, so it's funny that you said that because I'm like thinking of the process of you going on this trip, it putting you in that state of yeah. like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. To then the, like the perfect timing of like these investors coming in and like that it had to have been the perfect, like you couldn't write a better script, you know? Honestly, I, I, I have a video. I, 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 I don't do this enough, but like guys like Casey and Gary Vee and a couple of my other friends are like, start documenting this yeah. stuff. And I have this video when I'm there, I just got off a call with like Kendall Jenner's people and Kevin Hart's people. And they were decided they were coming in. I'm in like, literally like I barely have cell service. I have the biggest, like sort of like cultural leaders in the world. And meanwhile, I'm in this place and it's just the, the juxtaposition of it was just like, absolutely insane it's yeah crazy. it was wild so let's talk about who who's on board who came on board with yeah. the company uh for everyone so, you can talk about yeah no i can talk about them. uh so yeah um well we have we have a lot of investors over time but in this recent round it was like 20 pretty big names so i'll, I'll probably leave some out but it was like justin and Haley beaver came in um serena williams kendall jenner james cordon kevin hart steve aoki gary v Scooter Braun, who's my, one of my main partner, who sort of helped put a lot of this together with me. He would sort of put me on an email and he'd go, make it happen. And I, I would always yeah. tell him, hey, you just get me the meeting, I got the rest. And yeah. so it was a pretty cool partnership. So I'm missing people. Sorry if I left anyone out, but uh, yeah, it was cool. Uh, what, what you start to realize is like the world, it's, it kind of starts to get small all of a sudden, right? Like you get connected into these places and it, it, it almost like, it, it justifies like seven years of just grinding behind the scenes. Like I was like never like out in front of anything. I was always like behind it, like building something of like real stability. Like even Gary said to me, like he sees a lot of people and most of them have like these binary businesses mm -hmm. and ours was so well, like it's just very diverse between like Amazon and our website and all 20, 30,000 stores we're in. And so it's sort of justified, like when all of a sudden I'm talking to these people and they're like, wow, man, like you're the real deal. Like you built something real. And I'm like, I, like to hear that it's almost yeah. like it's like this like weird like moment where you're like wow like I, it just happened so fast like it went yeah. from building this thing building 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 and all of a sudden like boom it's like it popped you know and yeah. so it's just it was just a wild experience did, did it but did it pop or did it was it popping over time and now no, it you're was. able to look back right and like yeah no no it was popping yeah. over time for sure yeah. it's just it's almost I think it's the it, almost like the uh like the public finding out about it yeah, more. Exactly. Like I've been, there's been wins all along the way that yeah. I've been f feeling awesome about. This was just like, like almost recognition. Everyone's yeah, like, yeah. wow, dude, like you're killing. I'm like, dude, I've been killing it for seven yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, you're the one. <laughs> it was that, actually you're, harder seven yeah, years ago. Yeah, you're the you're the overnight success, right? That's, that's, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, it's all just happened. No, it happened really so over a long time. So what are the? So I always love these. Like, what are the? Uh, what are those key milestones? It doesn't have to be public. Like, obviously, this was the biggest one right? yeah but what are the ones over time where you're like fuck like we we're doing it even yeah. though like now looking back on those times they may they're look small, small yeah. but at the time you were like dude this is happening yeah it's so good too that's why these combos are great because sometimes with my personality it's hard to actually reflect i'm always like go what's next bigger yep. but um yeah reflecting is so important so i think probably the coolest one was having this product, like having people laugh at me saying we're, you know, there's Gatorade and there's always, mm -hmm. you can't start a CPG product and make it like yeah. just all the million reasons why, right? Yeah. Like my roommate at the time when I wasn't going to go to business school, like laughed at me when I told him I'm going to, awesome. I'm going to drop my job. So that's what he need recorded. I know if I would have <laughs> had that on video, that thing would be gold right now. Um, no, but pro the couple ones, one, um, when we got into one whole foods, we had the picture out front of the whole foods. Okay. It was like, you know, we had gotten to some mom and pop stores, but for some reason it was like, wow, this like retailer, this logo, especially then like five years ago, that was like the gold standard. Like it was really hard to get mm -hmm. in there. Now it's like Erewhon or these other places. Yeah. Right. But it was like, it gave us cred, right? Like mm -hmm. immediate cred. So I remember that was just sort of like this point where, Hey, we can, we got something. Um, when I started hearing about like, I would get like pictures from like major league clubhouses or like, like NBA locker rooms and their thing would be stacked full of liquid IV. And I'd be like, this is Wait, how were they getting it? I didn't even know that really? was no, like they were like maybe Amazon or okay. it wasn't like, but it wasn't, wasn't like something like guys. free or like, no, they were like buying it. Cause it was like, imagine the best athletes in the world yeah. 
turning down everything they're getting for free. Right. And like the trainers who are ordering this stuff for them because it's the best performing product. It's like this moment of credibility too, which was really cool. And then, yeah. And then probably this group called the Emerson group, they're like a big, like distribution sort of, um, like sales company and the CEO who's like, he's like a retail, like tycoon, like everyone knows this dude. And he, he, I went and met with him. I flew across Philly. I had like a 10 minute meeting with him and that's all I had. And I needed money like to really get going. And and he goes, listen, we're going to partner up. Like you're going to get to use all of our resources. And like, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars that you're looking for. I just need you to go to this one show. And so it's the show in Vegas called ECRM mm-hmm. where 270 uh, brands, uh, mostly like bigger brands with new products. Mm-hmm. And we're like a totally new brand. This is in 2016. He's like, listen, you're going to meet with 50 retailers in five days. You have 20 minute meetings. Um, if like, if you get three or four of them to give you like a test, like that would be a huge win. Yeah. Like it's gonna be hard like to your five stores and like, yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah, a test. Thousand, like, yeah. He goes like your product is expensive. They're not going to understand your give back mission, but like, just have some thick skin and I'm naive. I get excited. I start talking fast. Like I am now. So I took all these meetings one-on-one and like, I never really got a no. And the Emerson guy sitting there was like, I've never seen anything like this. Like they're so excited. Like, and so we literally got no no's. We won best new item of 2016 at the show. And that was like the, that was probably the biggest one. I was like, okay. holy crap. Like all the buyers of all the big stores, like voted on us as the best new product. Like this was like in my head two years yeah. ago. It's just, so that was a pretty crazy time. That's awesome. Yeah. And then what's been the, so I always love like the buyer, um, like the buyer vendor. You know this world, man. You're, well, so, I mean, you got so the beverage is, background. Well, so like I, I joke about it because I've been on both sides, right? Like I've been selling into doors. Right. Um, and then I've had doors that I have people selling. To right. Me. Oh yeah. That's true. And so I've always had this mentality of like, and it's probably to a fault with like my brands of like, I want them to be, like, I want to be getting phone calls saying, Hey, yeah. we want you in. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause I know how much of a pain in the ass it is yeah. getting 10 samples a day and like, totally just like leave me alone, you yeah, know? Yeah, totally. Um, so I'm just curious how that vendor interaction has been now especially since this whole investment round yeah like it, it, or how many how many people are banging down your yeah, doors the, to get it, your it's product just out? totally flipped yeah it's right funny like, how the paradigm yep. just totally flipped um yeah i mean it, it's funny looking back you know now we, i hired a vp of sales and then he hired a guy underneath him so now this like junior guy is going to take these meetings and i would like fly across the country i'd like you have the best sales meetings, pitch right? i know i would i would i would get them i'll tell you about them okay. i would get them and I was like, oh, they're going to give me one skew in the back corner. But yeah. hey, we got it. This kid goes to the meeting. He, he's, he's great. This guy, Russell, he's killing it. But like, he goes, he comes back. He's like, yeah, they added nine skews. I'm like, how did you pull that off? But, you know, it has, there's a lot yeah, of momentum. There's, a lot, there's a lot going on. No, but my whole theory was, and this was with investors and retailers, which is very similar in terms of strategy, was like, I've always been a huge relationship person. And so like, even when I was selling tickets to the Diamondbacks or like when I went to my professor's, you know, uh, door to get into the program, like meeting people one-on-one, like, especially nowadays where you can do everything on here. Like I would, I would send a note and I'd say, Hey, just need 15 minutes you know, of your time. I'll fly. Just give me a 15 minute gap. I'll fly across the country. I just want to show you what's going on here. Like, this is pretty exciting stuff. And with Scott Emerson being involved, it gave me a little more credit, copy him on the email. And my whole thing was, you know, they'd be like, Hey, send me a deck or send me samples. By the way, you did mm-hmm. this. You just get them at it. Just send them to me. Get off and get out of, you know, get out. Mm-hmm. I'm, you're annoying me. Yep. And I would never do that. I refused. Yep. I would say, Hey, just let me know when you have time. I, I'm all good, but just give me a 15 minute gap. I, the deck is going to go into your inbox. You're never going to see it. I've never literally never, we're in 30,000 stores. Not one has been sold with a deck or over even email or over email zero. I'm over. And so I just, I tell my whole theory with that and investors set, just send your deck through. I'm like, Nope. Yeah. I go, give me time. I'll be there. And so I have crazy stories where like, I literally, I flew from like Orlando to Seattle, to New York in three days to meet with like an investor and a retailer. And those 15 minutes, I was very confident that I could build trust in Mm -hmm. what we're doing. I believed in our product to its core. And so I always tell people like, you know, entrepreneurs ask me now, I just spoke on a panel. Um, and I'm just like, yo, if you, you have to have the ability to talk to someone and do that. But if you do like, don't waste any of your ammo on an email or on a deck or anything like, or sending samples, like the product, even if it sells itself still doesn't sell itself. Even if you have the best product, unless you're yeah. like bulletproof or like yeah. even for us now, now I can, I could send a sample and be like, yeah. okay, we'll pull it in. Yeah. Right. By but, the way, Google us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Justin will send you a yeah. text. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Early, uh, early days though, it was just like all about face to face. And even now, like when there's a big problem, like, you know, we have like whole foods or Costco, or even like an investor, like 
I'll take a, it. it I, hey, let me know when you can get together. Let's get together. And, yeah. and that, I, I'm confident that we can solve a problem yeah. that way. You know, it's just it was well, crazy too to me that people like, especially with the issues, they think like it's such a massive and it's like hmm, just a conversation. We can we can, sure call. we can hash it out. I know it's just people working with people. It's people. It's, it's it. business. Yep. And if you handle it right, you yep. really can. You can work through a lot right, of stuff. Man. Yeah. So what are the biggest challenges you're facing now um, or opportunities? Yeah, I mean, I think of them together. They're kind of one of the, <laughs> normally our biggest challenges ended up being our biggest wins, okay. right? Um, the saying that I've been saying to our team is, and now it has some cred because it's happened, but I always, I've been saying like, the problem is the portal. Mm -hmm. So like, I looked back and our biggest problems have actually turned into our biggest wins. We had to figure out some, like we were ready to drink bottle to start. That, I was going to ask you that because I remember seeing something yeah. about, I mean, I don't know if you can talk about this. Is that next? What? It's going back? Uh, we, we, we might. There's, okay. I mean, there's right. lots of, we have yeah. lots of different delivery forms between bottle, people want goose. Yep. Like there's a lot of different yep. things we can do. Um, but yeah, the, the idea was like, we started making, we started getting a lot of orders and shipping it and we were, it was like 30 bucks to ship to a ship. 12 pack. Yep. And then like we'd have stores and we have to get refrigerator space as you know, which is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So we're like, Hey, what if we put in these packs and we could ship it for two bucks and put it at the cash register on the counter? And so it was sort of like a workaround until we realized the portability of the stick was amazing. All of a sudden yeah. we had bikers and cyclists and now we're like getting cross merchandise with water with like, for example, we're at Hudson News now in the airports and they have no room for products, but we made a cooler display that suctions onto the water cooler. The number one most trafficked place in all of retail, mm -hmm. water cooler at Hudson News. You get through security, you don't have water, you go buy water. So now we're in every one with this like display and it's because we had this problem. Like I had this idea that we we're gonna have bottles all over the shelves and now like that problem forced us to get yeah. creative. So um, anyway, tangent, uh, <laughs> biggest, uh, right now it's probably um, just, it's incredible to grow a team, but it is like, it's really, really hard. You know, we're like 25 people. We're going on like literally we'll be 40 by the end of the year. So we just moved into an office. We have to find a new one. And I love dealing with people, but there's like just people issues. And, and so, you know, I've never done this before. Like I'm confident in my leadership abilities and the mentors I have around me and stuff, but going from five of us to 25 of us and now 50 soon, it's like, it's just it's a, a lot. lot. It's yeah. a lot. It, 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 you like these people are almost like your kids, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, not like, not in that way, but you like feel such loyalty to them and, and the people, they're the ones driving the ship, right? And so my, probably my biggest challenge is like team and people stuff, um, which again, there's a huge opportunity too, as we get just awesome people on board. There's such like scale and leveraging good people. You realize like stuff, people where you can like hand something off and you, you it's not it that you just trust stone. them. They do way yeah. better than you would ever do. You're like, yeah. that. I need more of you, yeah. <laughs> right? So, um, that's one. And then, yeah, just thinking about like, you know, we have these product line extensions launching. So hydration has been our core, but this delivery system, you know, we have a sleep product now. Um, and then we're launching like an energy product as well with like matcha and a bunch of green stuff. Um, so some cool new products. And then, you know, how do we scale the business most efficiently? Like, you know, there's lots of people knocking on our door right now from like big strategic partners to like just, uh, you know, big financial investors. And so, it's really being thoughtful about the brand and the team and the consumers and like the product and how good the product is and what's the best way. Right. And, yeah. and, and then there's like the financial piece for all the, the investors and owners. And so that's, those are probably team products yep. and, uh, and then just like the backing and yeah, how, yeah. What's the best way to do it? I'm thinking through it. And I mean, you know, some of my friends like Jake, yep. they, you know, movement, they just got acquired and I have a few other guys like that. I'm sort of just listening and learning mm -hmm. to, what makes the most, I don't think there's one right way. I think it's the right way for you yeah, and for your brand right time, at the right, right time. Exactly. So I always, and I asked you about the RTDs cause it always is very like being in the supplement space. It's always funny to me that like RTDs get put on a pedestal over supplements yeah. when it's basically the same thing. And sometimes worse cause it has emulsifiers and preservatives, totally right? Preservatives. Um, but I always think it's funny how like the big supplement brands that then scale up typically go into rtd so ready to drinks for those of you guys who don't yeah. know um where it's literally the same product just liquefied in right. in a shelf stable form yeah um but yeah that's why i was curious if that's it are you going to stay close with powder and um and keep your channel going that yeah route? um i think I, I there's tons of options yeah. i think that uh it's kind of become our value prop yep. like we're like this portable stick and if you i mean you look all over social media and all of the people talking about it it's almost like some cachet to it. Like mm -hmm. it's not Gatorade. Yep. It's not some, right. And so 
it's kind of become that, but I, I, I wouldn't say that there's an opportunity, if there's an yeah. opportunity, like, and now that we have the capability to like test stuff, you know, um, that we wouldn't do it. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, so travel, where's next? Uh, in terms of like a mission trip, a mission trip or personal. Tra lots of per uh, just business, personal travel in the States. I don't even, honestly, yeah. I don't even, I think I'm going to New York <laughs> next week. I have no idea. Uh, New York, Boston. Yeah. Um, but we're planning a trip to Puerto Rico. Okay. So it was supposed to be November. We're pushing it to January. Um, but we have this incredible partner called direct relief. Um, we had in that round, we had uh, these guys called yes theory. I don't know if you've heard of them, mm -hmm. but check them out on social media. They're like this, these three guys, they've like young guys, like 20, 24, 25 years old. And they've created this incredible community. Like they say yes to like everything basically. And their whole thing is like seek discomfort. Um, but one of them's from Puerto Rico. Okay. So they're going to go and they're, they, they just created like a feature film that's getting like aired, I don't know, on like Netflix or something. So they're going to be coming with us. And Puerto Rico is obviously really, really struggling right now. Like it's just like, it's still right. Even after all this time, it, it's like really not. Yeah. So it kind of gets out of the news, but mm -hmm. if you dig in, it's just like not good still. And so, um, yeah, I'm going on another one of those, and and if you, I'll send you the info. We're bringing like a whole crew of people, ne but I never never turned down a good time on a travel trip. Yeah, so it should um, be cool to, to 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 you know have one of our mission trips in yeah. Puerto Rico. What and then what's going on in Nepal? You said you're building this education center. Yeah, so it's just like it's the it's basically the ideas are all coming together, but okay. we've had this uh, in our business plan to like build a live foundation um, by 2021. And I'm kind of a year ahead of that because this trip just fired me up to help sooner. And so uh, we're putting a plan together for next year. But the idea is instead of just giving product, we'd actually be able to like, you know, uh, you know, take funds from the business, put them into this foundation where we can do something like um, build a school. So it's still early days, but it's it's now up on the board. And once it gets up on the board, plans start to get built and, and things start to happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very early, but uh, we have some really good connects there with, you know, just people who are like actually changing the world, like with their hands yeah. and, and they, they, they're, they're excited to get behind it with us. That's amazing. Man. Yeah. And then where are you sending? So with the product that you donate, yeah. where are the countries selected or is it kind of as needed for emergency support? It's got yeah, a great question. So both okay. we do, um, uh, I'm going to forget the term right now. So one is like emergency relief, mm -hmm. which is obvious like tornado hits, hurricane yep. hits, you know, a monsoon hits or whatever. Um, and then we send product in and, and it, it, the, like the top five most requested items in disaster relief happens to be ORS products because there's like such limited clean water. So you need to make the most out of the water that they do have. So this is like, when I went there, I realized like the massive opportunity that we have. Like before we started Liquid IV, top five, normally top three requested items. Like think of everything you could think of, right? Mm -hmm. Like Advil or like anything, like bandages, like not just products, like not just like consumables, anything, ORS, like salts are, are, are top three. So, um, what was the question? So where, where do you decide or how do you oh, decide? How decide? Where to... So one is emergency, emergency yep. relief stuff, um, which is probably about half of it. And then the other one is just areas of need. And so that one's a little more preventative. And so it's all over direct release reaches like they're in 90 countries, I believe. Um, and so, you know, I, we have a map, but it's like everywhere from, you know, Africa to, you know, places like, you know, these like islands like Puerto Rico that have been hit to Nepal, um, Southeast Asia all over. And then, and then here in the United States too. Yeah. So like when the fires hit, like these firefighters are, they, they, we have like a huge firefighter community now, which is really cool. So we were like that one, we actually did ourselves. We were like hand delivering sticks there, but there's so much opportunity to, yeah. to get product in people's hands. Yeah. That's great, man. And then, so I try to give as much value as possible on this podcast. Yeah. And so a lot of questions I get personally and then through the podcast is, so you're like, we, we talked about this, we joked about it. You're like the overnight success, right? Yeah. But you're like the, you're like the, you know, poster child of like, this is entrepreneurship. This is what you can do. Yeah. But a lot of people have a hard time connecting where they are currently with the future and in a lot of it's the patient game totally. but what is like what is some advice you would give someone who's either got an idea yeah. a brand in mind or even started something to to continue growing it to where you know they can be you know where they want to be or, yeah. or, or proud of it another really good question i it's one of our pillars we have four pillars that uphold our mission and uh number one is you got to start somewhere and so like you can have this idea. You want it to be perfect. You need this. You need that. You don't have funding. Your parents don't want you to do it. There's, you have a job, you have a family. There's like a million reasons why you just got to start. Like that is the momentum you need to get going. Now, of course it needs to be planned out. It can't just be like totally on a whim, but I would say, you know, 
most people I talk to now, their issue is that they're just afraid to start or afraid to fail. And so like just going, you, even if you start and you do, it doesn't work out, like there is learning in that. Like, mm -hmm. like there's learning in failures. For me, mine was golf. Like that was my, and, and, and I See, just- now you don't even have title list on don't, your hat. I'm just <laughs> CTW guy, I could put that on the hat. Uh, yeah, so, so I think just starting is like, that's gotta be number one, you just gotta go. And then the other one is, um, I think mentors are really important. So like, if you don't have the experience, how are you gonna know what to do? Part of it is like the naivety to start and to do stuff that people are saying is probably not right or where the best ideas come from. But having that balance with great mentors, for me, it was like, I've just had a couple people I've been able to lean on who, you know, I don't didn't have the experience, but they did. And so it's this interesting balance in this fine line you walk where it's important to listen to other people. It's like really important to like soak it up. But you have to like take it all through your filter and then apply your own your own sort of ideologies or game plan to that. And so I think the balance of just going, just get going and then have people who um, truly support you like at your core, not because they want something out of it. Yeah. Like my dad, it, again, a little cliche, but he's like an incredible mentor of mine. And I have like two or three other guys like that who their only interest is me and not not investors, not people on my board, not, yep. pe by the way, I love all them too. I love yep. you all. I love them all. But like, I have people who are like, just interested if in If the like, business failed, they would still be my well being, yeah. Right. And so those are the people I can really go to in hard times and, and they can help me through it. But yeah, yeah just start. I think, so that's interesting. So the start, you know, the afraid to start or fear of failing, yeah. like it's, it's blended, right? It's a totally. very blurry line, mm -hmm. but like, what is the, you know, I, th I think it's fun. Like people hear that all the time and then they're like, but like, I don't know if they try to justify, I'm afraid to start or justify, I'm afraid to fail. Yeah. But like that, it, it's so interesting to me that like that tipping point of like, once you get a little taste of it, whether it's success or failure, yeah. you start learning quicker of like, totally. hey, this is what's right to do, this is what's not right, to, you know, like, and it just starts flowing. And it's hard to like, same thing, I look at failures now, and I'm like, they hit a little harder, yeah. but they're not, they're still like, you gain that much more from yeah. them, you know? There's something, and I think there's something really empowering to committing to just start or yeah. empowering to like, take that risk and go. Like now you have, it's, it's almost like, wow, I can do that. Like it, 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 there's something about momentum. I, I think momentum is such a huge thing. Mm -hmm. And like just taking that first step, right? And then that next one, yep. it, it's empowering whether it works or not is a different thing. Like that's where like strategy and business plans and all that can come yep. in. But like, that's something that you can hold on to. Hey, yep. next time I have a really good idea or I have this yep. opportunity, I'm gonna go. And yeah, I think it's that like the moment you had in Nepal, right? It's right. that like state you put yourself in, but you would never be there if you didn't start. Like if right. you didn't get going, you'd never have that feeling of like, this is what, this is what I want to do. This is working. Like I'm going to keep going. It, it, it's crazy for me because people like see what we're doing now or they hear about the investor round or they hear about 2 million sticks donated. I'm telling you, it was four years ago. I had nothing and I was giving a hundred sticks. Like yep. it was a lot. It was a big deal to a homeless shelter. Yep. Right. And, and I, it was almost like you saw it on the bottom line, right? Like, Oh, we just, I, it hurt. No, yeah. I had investors who were like, what yeah. are you giving them away a product for? Go make <laughs> money with that. And you had to believe in like our yep. true mission. Right. And so, but it's a true testament to like, if you set your mind to something, you get going, right? Like, and you have to have the big vision. You have to have that dream, but you really can make it happen. Like I, I, I have to be a testament to people who like, who are just at that beginning phase. I was there like, and now all of a sudden, like I'm on call with Kevin Hart, like yeah. crazy, right? Or I'm in like Nepal with my yeah. team giving away 2 million sticks, but it's all about, it's like getting going and then building momentum and just continuing that momentum and knowing that whatever gets thrown at you, you're gonna be able to handle it. Love it. I think that's a good place to end, but I do want to know what was the craziest phone call? What was the one where you're like, this is just ridiculous. Uh, Cause I see you FaceTime a lot. FaceTime's that's are part fun. of your like, yeah, no, about being there in person. Yeah, in person. Right? That's like, yeah. it's a makeshift way of yeah. doing it. Cause these people are really hard to get in person, <laughs> especially in the timeline before the launch video. You go to like Pat security. Yeah, and, it's pretty yeah. intense. Uh, what was the coolest one? God, there are so many. Steve Aoki was really cool. I always like listen to his music growing up. And of all the people, like he doesn't have a lot of people in between him. He would okay. like, he would just text He's me. He's the guy. He's like, hey, can you make me a strawberry cake flavor? You know, how he throws a cake out of yeah, people's yeah. face. So now he wants to throw a strawberry cake flavor and call it Aoki flavor. That one was really cool just because he was like so chill about yeah. the whole thing. The one where I was like, this is crazy was we got, we were blowing out. We had a huge sale on our website. And so we have a customer service. We were under man. And so we had a bunch of emails we hadn't gotten back to in a while. And so in our inbox, like our company inbox, mm -hmm. 
for like 11 days, Kendall Jenner's team had reached out. This is before the fundraising started. She said, hey, she loves the passion fruit product. Can you please send us some? We'd love to like talk about an opportunity together. And like 11 days, no one looked at the email. That's amazing. So it ended up like once the people started talking about it, I, I, I kind of heard, I was like, wait, what happened? And so they, they, they sent it to like, me. Were people afraid to even bring that? Yeah, they, didn't, they were yeah. afraid. They were afraid. <laughs> and uh, it was all good. It was just part of the timing. But anyway, she loved our passion fruit product. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, this is not like a marketing thing. She was been drinking our product. She wanted to send it to us. So my idea was we, me and Scooter had started talking about the round. And I was like, okay. Kendall has, she's, she's good in a money situation. She already loves the product. Why would she not want to invest in this? If she loves the product that much. So I literally, my first reply was, yep, samples on the way. I was like, hey, I think this could be a really cool opportunity we have going on. Like Scooter and I are leading this round and XYZ are in. Like I would love to like get on a, and I copied Scooter. I just like, yeah, I just went for yeah. it. <laughs> copied and like literally five days later, money wired in. Like I hadn't even talked to her, but she just, that's how into it she was. Yeah. That's crazy. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. That was amazing, man. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I know you got to get going. So I think we'll, we'll wrap things up. But how can people uh, find you? Like yeah. You or Liquid IV? Yeah. At Liquid IV is like our, just on all of all platforms. You know, Instagram is probably our main one where we tell I think the coolest stories right now. And then me personally is at Brandon underscore Cohen. I'm spelled I N. Um, yeah, man, I, I love, I love coming on here and talking. Thank you for inviting me on great, and dude. hearing your, I know you, we didn't get your story on camera, yeah. but sort of hearing it and where you're at. Um, and just your sort of like wh how you got to here is just really cool. And, and it's exciting, man. Seriously. Sure, I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah. I'm cool. sure we'll find like 15 more connections. Too, yeah, so, yeah. Seriously. <laughs> All right, brother. All right. Thanks dude.